Uh, all right, everyone, we're going to get started. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, welcome. Uh, hopefully everybody's still, it's Monday, right? So we're still excited. We're not completely exhausted yet. Um, so that's good, right? Welcome to the vCenter server expert panel. Uh, I hope you'll get some value out of here and get some good insights from our panelists today. My name is Adam Eckerly. Uh, I'm in the uh, CPBU technical marketing. Uh, and uh, I cover vCenter, vCenter uh, web client, and the vCenter server appliance. Uh, so if my panelists uh, would like to introduce themselves. I'm Blair Fritz. I'm a staff integration engineer. I recently was the global technical lead inside of global support services. I moved over to the ISBU to do more day to operations with R&D and the likes of this great man right here. <laughs> uh, I'm Dilpreet Bindra. I'm a, the senior director for vCenter. Um, I have been at VMware for 10 years, worked on ESX in the beginning and moved on um, through a number of different technologies over to vCenter. My name is Ahmad Yunus. I'm a senior technical marketing engineer. I cover vCenter, vCenter server appliance, and migrations to vCenter server appliance. I've been at VMware probably now for six months, started out as a customer, partner side, and now vendor side. I also blog externally at amadunas.com. Yeah, so my name is Ryan Johnson. I'm a senior tech marketing architect in our integrated systems business unit. Um, I've been at VMware six and a half years. I was in professional services along with Adam for a number of years. Um, my focus is on the VMware validated designs, which are prescriptive blueprints for building and operating a software defined data center. And I have the pleasure of working with Blair now. So, uh, All right, thanks guys. Uh, so the way this is going to kind of work, um, there's mics in the aisle, the two outside aisles, or sort of three-quarter aisles. Uh, if you have questions, please just make your way over to the mics. Uh, we'll give you the floor and let you ask your question, um, hopefully regarding vCenter or something close. Uh, <laughs> or how it integrates um, with SDDC. Alex. Yeah, maybe. VVD, SDDC. Uh, so... Um, one of the things I want to talk about real quick before we get going uh, is I have to show this slide, right? Uh, there may be some things that we talk about where we might give an answer of we're working on this or we're targeting this or uh, something along those lines. Uh, so there may be some future reaching statements uh, that, of course, may or may not make the final product. So uh, take that as you may. All right? Makes sense? Uh, so the first thing that... I kind of want to talk before we get uh, into some questions is just around the direction of vCenter server, right? Um, you're going to see a lot of things about the appliance this week. Uh, you've probably seen maybe a few things already, depending on who you've talked to. I know Ahmad and I are going to have some sessions uh, tomorrow and Wednesday and Thursday even uh, on the appliance, uh, how to get to the appliance. Uh, you know, one of the, one of the barriers to appliance adoption has been uh, – migrating from Windows to the appliance. So Ahmad will talk later in the week uh, about that. Um, another thing is, is making the appliance the choice for vCenter server um, and how we can talk to customers and remove barriers, uh, uh, things like update manager uh, integrations with other things, uh, and we can, we can talk a little bit about that uh, if you all have specific questions. Um, the web client is, is fair game. We can talk about that if you have questions, the direction. Uh, hopefully, everybody has seen the HTML5 uh, fling that's out there. Uh, if you haven't, I definitely advise you to check it out. Um, so with that, uh, I'm going to ask Dilpreet real quick to uh, say a few words about what he thinks about vCenter server, maybe some direction, uh, and, and what's going what is going to be important for you guys to learn. Um, so uh, we've been at this for a little while with VC. Um, historically, I mean, VC was a, a monolithic appliance uh, or monolithic application that was running on your Windows box. Um, very simple. Uh, it was connected to your database. Um, we're in a process of transitioning that into a platform. So a lot of the things that we're doing is really to make, bake that platform underneath so that other solutions can uh, build on top of that platform a lot easier and simpler. Um, uh, and to that end, uh, the architecture is shifting, so you've seen some of those changes as we go through 6.0. Um, uh, along with that, we've been really focused on making sure that the 
customer experience as you go through your life cycle operations, as you go through your other management operations, your, your uh, day zero, day one, and day two operations with VC, we were trying to make them as simple as possible. Um, and with 6.0, as you, uh, uh, I have a talk at, on Wednesday at 4 o'clock, so I'll, I'll plug that for a second. But um, the, w as you'll see is that we are becoming more and more prescriptive with some of the ways that we're allowing you to deploy VC so that we uh, take some of the burden of what you've been dealing with in the past away um, and give you a very um, clean end-to-end -end experience. Um, the appliance goes a long ways to that. Um, and so a lot of our forward-looking direction is the appliance. A lot of our, um, think, a lot of the things we're going to be talking about what, that we're working on are with the appliance. And so it's very important for you guys to start thinking about the appliance in a real way um, uh, because it, it, it allows us to do things that we cannot do with the Windows platform. Um, so uh, that being said, I think um, a number of um, interesting things that we can go into, um, I think that is a reasonable stage to set. Um, uh, Adam, anything specific? Yeah, so I, I think, um, who, who, just show of hands real quick, who is already running the appliance? Oh, whoa. Well, <laughs> take, take a look around yeah. if you're not holding your hand up. And just, you know, uh, that was a lot of people. So bravo, um, good stuff. Uh, Ahmad, do you want to say a few words about um, appliance or potentially pitch your session on? <laughs> <laughs> Shameless plug. Uh, migrating to the uh, vCenter server appliance is uh, Wednesday, I think around uh, noonish. But uh, so, kind of the disclaimer, right? We are working on a tool that will allow you to migrate directly from a Windows vCenter 5.5 to a vCenter server 6.0. U2 appliance. Um, the, the tool will actually bring over not only your core configuration and inventory, but you will have the option of also bringing over your performance data. So we'll do all the heavy lifting for you. And the big kicker is we will also assume the identity of your Windows vCenter server. That will come over as well. So UUID. IP and FQDN will all come over. So any products that integrate with vCenter will assume working and continue on knowing no difference. <laughs> yeah, do you want to work your way? When is that Remember that slide? <laughs> yeah. We're working on it. So if you follow the vSphere blog, we'll have some things coming out, and you'll be you'll you'll know. Will that also include uh, support for linked multiple vCenters? Yes. Oh. Yeah. So the question was, will the migration tool also support uh, multiple vCenters in linked mode? Yes. yes. So what you'll have to do, consider like an upgrade. You'll have to break link mode, migrate one vCenter, go up, migrate the second vCenter. If you are in an external deployment. So just quick poll, who here is running embedded? So both SSO and VC on the same box. Okay. And external? Who's running external? Okay. So if you're external, you'll migrate SSO to PSC, all of your SSO first, and then you'll go and migrate your VCs. If you're embedded, you'll migrate just as you are, and you'll come over embedded. So whatever topology you're in today, is how you're going to come across. We won't allow change of topology. So the other uh, interesting thing about the migration capability um, that we're working on um, is that when you're going through the migrate, um, you start off with your current uh, VC Windows environment and you get to VCSA environment. If for any reason you end up with a broken configuration when you go to the VCSA environment, you can always just power it down and power on the VC Windows environment back up again, and you're back up and running. Uh, it's a very simple rollback mechanism. We don't destroy your previous VC Windows until you're perfectly happy with the VCS. Actually, we don't destroy it at all. It just yeah. stays there. It's up to you if you want to destroy it. We don't touch the source VC at all. 
It's very much like going from the 5.5 VCSA to the 6.0 VCSA. VCSA. We just leave it dormant. Mm -hmm. Exactly. exactly. Yeah. Sir, yeah. Quick question. Please. Is this going to be limited to uh, SQL database only or Oracle as well? We support all databases that are supported on uh, vCenter 5.5. Okay, great. Um, for folks that are raising their hand, if it would, uh, if it's okay, if you can migrate to the mics, it would make it a lot simpler. <laughs> no pun intended. In motion to the mics. <laughs> <laughs> um, and we can form two lines. It would be really, really easy that way. Um, um, so, it, yeah. Am I going to be able to back up my VCSA like I do a VDS at some point in the future? <laughs> yes. Yeah. Something yeah. we're working on. That's something we're working on. Uh, we'll look uh, a few um, attend. I think Yiting's doing a session on this one for the. Um, some of our product managers obviously are focusing on that. But yes, we're looking at keeping the current image-based solution as well, uh, so you can actually organize and do all of your VMs in a in a, in a backup group. Um, we're also looking at the solution to do some type of file-based backup and file-based restore. So uh, today with. Uh, uh, 6.0, you already have the capability of backing up using VDP or VDP-like solutions like NetBackup and um, uh, the semantic. Um, uh, you got it. Semantic. Yeah. 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 So VM and, and um, the uh, the uh, and then with 6.0, you one that capability understands the M by N architecture, the the PSC and VC being separate nodes. <laughs> Uh, so with 6.0 U1, you have the capability of doing that using the snapshot-based mechanism that you have for your other VMs. With uh, what we're working on, right, is that we, you can use, you can extend that capability to file-based right, backup. Sir? Update manager and site, uh, site recovery manager, there's still Windows-based products to integrate with the VCSA? Today. Um, <laughs> uh, it, on, um, uh, VUM is something that we're, we're working on getting ported over to the appliance. So uh, uh, let me just elaborate a little bit. The, what we're working on is the capability of migrating VUM into VCSA so that it's a single install and a single entity that you have to work with from um, w including VUM as part of the VC install. The site recovery manager is a separate product, right? Yeah, um, managed by a separate BU. Uh, I don't know their plans off the top of my head, okay. uh, but I'm, you know, we could follow up for you. Find me afterwards, and we can find out who to talk to. GS Costa. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Right, sir. Yeah. Uh, for really two questions. One is uh, we use the uh, Windows Server right now. Could you expand on what the advantages you were talking about of using the appliance are and the other part of it is do you see a expiration or a uh, sunsetting of the windows version in the future you know sort of like with a windows client for vSphere sure Why don't I take this okay I mean so the appliance uh, benefits to the appliance first of all quick provisioning I mean, we've all deployed a Windows vCenter, right? And we know how long it takes to provision Windows, patch it, then install vCenter, right? With the appliance, OVA, go through the wizard, boom, done, right? So quick deployment there. There's no operating system licensing. There's no database licensing, right? Um, we, we also, uh, as far as management of the database, very minimal that you have to do for the VCSA compared to like SQL or Oracle. So those are really the, the, the main benefits um, to the appliance. You wanna? I, th I, think one thing, I think one thing you guys will completely love is that there's one person or one company that you have to call when any problems occur, right? It's as, uh, it's as simple as that. We own the soup to nuts in that environment. We can best help you in that environment to be able to solve your problems rather than pointing you somewhere else. Right. The other thing is that um, because it's a single um, entity, uh, we're working on search such things in that environment like the file-based backup restore that we were talking about. But the 
the other things that we're working on is high availability that uniquely the appliance gives us the benefit um, because it's so self-contained and we can control its workflow a little bit better that we can actually do high availability as ba baked into the appliance rather than worrying about having to deal with the other um, uh, windows installed. And further, since we own the actually underlying OS, we can make greater optimizations for that. Rather than having the administrator go into Windows and make these registry key, key changes or add this registry key or do this, that, and the other thing, uninstall your server, or your, your, your antivirus, or postpone that for a little bit by owning the actual underlying OS too, we can greatly optimize that for quicker reboots um, and, and, and under, uh, better read, read writes really fast. Um, reboot times, really. So we made some great optimizations by actually owning it from, as you said, from soup to nuts. So, yeah. Thank you. Yeah, I think I'll just add one more thing. Uh, you know, the vision of really vCenter, what's happened to vCenter, how it's evolved over time, right? It's, it's not only become a linchpin of our environments, so many external dependencies are now depending on vCenter. Uh, you know, we're not the days of yore where if we lost vCenter, uh, blew up and became a smoking crater, right? It wouldn't cause us heartaches, you know, back in the three uh, and four days, perhaps. Uh, now, you know, when vCenter's down, right, there's provisioning tools, there's backup tools, there's all kinds of things that are now impacted by vCenter being down. So the appliance not only, you know, to, to what these guys were saying, makes deployment simpler, but also operations. You know, think as we as we try to enrich the, the set of APIs that we use to, to interact with vCenter and manage vCenter, um, the, the appliance really helps in, in making that so we can not worry about the underlying components of vCenter. We can worry about the application and worry about using the APIs to interact with it. Uh, so that's something that, that um, has been a challenge in the past and something that we're, we're working towards, and I think customers will get a lot of value out of that. Yeah, let me add one last thing. I think the ones, uh, the folks in the room that are really performance conscious, the VCSA actually performs better than the Windows version of VC as well um, uh, in 6.0. Um, so uh, the other thing is, I think I lost some people asking questions by asking them to go to the mic. I am going to open up <laughs> the hands again. <laughs> All right, well, we got a couple people at the mic, so let's yeah. get to them first. I think, sorry, I think you were, oh, okay. Hi, we're literally, literally going to upgrade to 6.0 next month. So now you're dropping this appliance thing. Um, and you don't have a path to go from 5.5 to 6.0 on the appliance. So you already said that that's coming. And you I didn't say that's coming. I said we're working. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> If you're a lawyer, raise your hand. <laughs> well, so, Mr. Me, so Mr. Me, I Trump, got talking to before uh, I came here. <laughs> um, so, recommendations. I mean, you know, we're 50,000 people worldwide. We've got multiple V centers. So, how long should I wait? Um, and the other thing is, I won't tell you how long, but I would tell you to wait. Okay. Um, the, the other point. The other question now is. I am also in my budget cycle for the next year. Right now, vCenter is technically free because it's a VM. This is a physical thing. I'm going to assume I need. Oh, so let me let me clarify there. the The vCSA is a virtual appliance. Oh, it's a virtual appliance. Yeah, it's oh, so not yeah. a physical okay. appliance. Yeah. yeah, that takes out yeah. the second question because I was going to say, give me an estimate of cost. <laughs> 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 So, okay, if it's virtual, that's cool. Yep. yep. Who, who would we be if we required our customers to run a physical piece of hardware? That's why I was shocked. I'm like, I know. <laughs> no, thanks for bringing it up, though. I yeah. mean, I'm sure other people probably may have had the same uh, inclination. So, to me, appliance is a physical thing. So, cool. yep. yeah, this so, is a virtual appliance. Okay. All right, sweet. Um, yeah, the first thing I just wanted to say is that I really appreciate the rapid development cycle you guys are using for the HTML5 interface. It's been great can't wait till it's done. Uh, and you kind of touched quickly on uh, what I was actually going to ask about, which was um, what sort of things can we see for high availability with vCenter and then also the, the PSCs in particular? I can take that. Uh, so with the PSCs right now, um, 
you still have the option, obviously, to do using a load balancer, which has been tried and true since 5.1. Um, but we're actually working on right now. I don't know how much people have taken a big peek into like the services for the vCenter server, but we have what's called the VMware Authentication Framework Daemon, VMAFD, if you've dug around any inside of the file system. Um, and what we've actually done there is we've made some improvements to VMAFD, such that for the PSC layer, what the vCenter server will actually do is it will cache all the PSCs that it knows about. So it used to be a one-to-one -one mapping. Um, and so what we've done now is we've actually added an additional caching tier to that so that VMAFD knows about all of the so that the vCenter server goes, I know you, I know you, I know you. And so if that PSC that it's originally talking to fails, it will seamlessly fail over to the other PSCs inside of its environment and continue operating. Now, the vCenter server side of things for VCHA, again, disclaimer, boop, um, <laughs> but it allows you right now we're focusing on uh, strictly high availability in terms of an active passive um, configuration with, uh, as of right now with a witness. We're working on trying to take the witness out of the situation, kind of, um, mm, really like before 1.0 vSAN, where we still needed to require a witness there before it was embedded into the product itself. So what we're actually trying to do here is we're eventually just going to move into a two node design with replication between the two so that we have a hot one and a cold one. Eventually we're obviously gonna work on towards, it, towards an active active, but that's kind of, that's the very high level. And I'm trying to very, do really good with tiptoeing around yeah. super complex things, but feel free if I miss anything. Um, no, I think you nailed it. I, I, I... Working on this uh, active-passive design, the active-passive design will work. Um, uh, the one that we're working on will work both in um, the um, embedded case, where you'll have your PSC and your VC in the same node, and so we will take care of PSC availability in that case, and you'll also have the capability of having the PSC external, and that, that way you would have the PSC HA capability um, as well as the VC uh, active passive capability. Okay, yeah, being able to get away from the load balancer issue with the yeah. PSCs would be <laughs> <laughs> much point up. Yes, <laughs> we hear you. Yeah, <laughs> we agree, sir. Okay, so first, let me just put out a disclaimer that I don't know everything I'm talking about because this is new technology for us. We are getting ready to deploy a cloud using vRealize, vSphere, all the vSuite, as well as Pivotal and some other topics. Um, and our corporate environment in Germany has already done this. But one of the things that they told us was that you have to be very careful when you reboot your vSphere server or your, um, your appliance because at that point the marketplace is no longer going to work because it can't speak to that so no new deployments can be rolled out. And I'm wondering is there any thing in the future that's going to be planned for the connection with the vCloud suite to be able to say okay vSphere is down, allow the customer to put in his request to deploy his new server or his new application and not give them an error and just queue it and then as soon as vCenter comes back up, then it will deploy it for you. I have seen things similar to that. So the, the, the question here, let me get understanding, you're looking at deploying a full software defined data center stack, but when vCenter is down, your other solutions are going to, are going to, your workloads are going to continue to run. You're still going to be able to use NSX, et cetera, but deploying workloads through vRealize automation specifically, or not, or you want those to queue, right? Correct. You could, we don't want the customer to see an error when they're, when they're going through and selecting and they're saying, okay, I need a new appliance or I need this, and they go through and at the end they click the button to say go ahead and poof, it says. Yeah. Yeah, so I've seen, I've seen this addressed in a couple ways where you actually have multiple vSphere endpoints. So if one's down, it can do, you can do error, error checking with uh, vRealize Orchestrator and the external workflows and say, okay, well, that's down. I can use a different endpoint, another, another vCenter server instance as my compute pod or my workload pod and deploy over there and, you, and migrate later. I've also seen implementations of uh, some customers that I work with closely um, where they've actually put error checking and if vCenter's down, they put a temporary, main, a temporary maintenance and then notify the customer when it comes back online. Okay. All right. Thanks for the question. But no, that's no, the, that is a great point there. And for, that's, that would be more of a short-term remediation. I completely agree, great orchestration in terms of handing off between the two, but in terms of actual queuing mechanism, that's a really good thing that I'd really like to see in the roadmap as well, in terms of all the products, because as vCenter kind of grows and, and blossoms, um, it becomes a very, it's a very robust API engine. That's kind of how I consider it at all times. And so it would be great to have a queuing mechanism. So no, that's a very good point there. Let me, let me just level set. Um, 
we have a, a, a really good set of tools in all these um, different areas. Um, a lot of the, uh, some of them are through acquisitions, and some of them are through um, have evolved on their own in some way. And what we're um, um, attempting to do um, in the future is to make sure that the architectures all make sense. Queuing could be one mechanism, but there's a lot of really sort of interesting low-hanging fruit there to make all these stacks work really, really well together. And so directionally, I, I mean, I wouldn't be uh, remiss to say that uh, that's a really important place for us to spend our time. Sir? Uh, it's me again. Sorry. He's back. <laughs> um, we, had a, we had an event. We, we really like VCSA, by the way. But we had an event where uh, there was a database entry that was causing problems. And when we tried to add a host, it would generate a panic inside mm -hmm. the VCSA. And it didn't shut down. It didn't reboot. But it would kind of go through its self-healing process, and then it would be stable again. So my, my request is if uh, panics occur or something, if those messages could be put somewhere in the GUI so we don't have to dig through the logs to find that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. I love the beauty of the appliance because I want it to work just like my phone. Mm -hmm. But when it's not working, I want to know more than just uh, whatever the event is that the end users are experiencing. That's a good point. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, and so, you know, we're definitely working on trying to make it um, – easier to interact with. Uh, we, we understand there's, you know, when we talk about moving to the appliance, some customers, you know, have a little, they're put off a little bit because it's a different operating system. You know, it's not Windows. Uh, it's not the database that they're used to. And so they're, they're concerned about um, interacting with, with the appliance based on those differences. Uh, and kind of going back to what I've said before and a couple of the other panelists have talked about is um, the simplicity of the appliance uh, is good. We also, um, you know, the, the appliance is something that we don't necessarily prevent you from digging into, right? We want it to be so you don't have to, right? Uh, we don't want you to have to crack the door open and get in uh, and have to manually go do, you know, PostgreSQL commands to, to fix things. Uh, so we're going to bubble more and more stuff up into the UIs, into the tools that are available, uh, into the APIs uh, to, to make you know, th those things much easier to monitor and then, you know, correct if something like that happens. Yeah. Uh, one thing that we are working on is very um, enhanced toolkits around the appliance, um, uh, specifically around the monitoring of the appliance and um, the management of the appliance as well as um, the uh, management and monitoring of the database. Um, and not only through uh, GUI, but giving you the capa capability of doing it through APIs. I think I'd also add maybe uh, consider using the Log Insight licenses that are available with vCenter. Yeah, you get. Yeah, is everybody aware that now with vCenter you have free Log Insight licenses? Well, if you're not well, aware, you go to vMore.com. You can download. You get 25 free OSIs with vCenter now. So if like you have a management pod or a management cluster, you could set up your visa, you know, set up log insight to, you know, collect from your management vCenter and all your and collect logs from all your management appliances for your STDC and be able to monitor all those logs, see your dashboards, do interactive analytics, and actually helps support in a, a great yeah. deal. And very similar to like uh, VR Ops, we always play with that one. It has its own management packs. So you can actually go through and you can stream out in a sex and stream out VR Ops as well. There's some couple cool things that there that that BU has done where those two products integrate very nicely. Like clicking contacts, where you can actually click on things. It'll take you straight over to VR uh, from VR Ops over to Log Insight. So it's some really cool uh, integration there that yeah, you can stream out and um, you can see from the v, from the vCenter database rather than have to go in and look at the logs there. You can actually it'll it'll spit out through the logs into VR Ops and you can install some management packs for more specific fine grained details and then you can set alarms for those. So if you were having that problem, rather than have to go into the vCenter, due to you can just um, stream it out to Log Insight itself and you can just take a peek at there and it makes it and, and it makes logs so pretty. Yeah. Thanks for waiting patiently. Go ahead. Hi, I heard the clapping. I was like, <laughs> quick question. I know you touched on backup, but I'm trying to write notes at the same time, so sorry. Does VMware officially support um, image level backups of the appliance? Yes, that's the only for, thing we for support. For 6.0? Correct. Yeah, for 6.0. 
Yeah, any of the advanced data protection APIs. V VDP is what we document because it's, it's our little baby. Like the yeah. API. Yeah. Beam or an Avamar, yeah. it's totally supported. Yeah. Yep. That's it. Thank yeah. you so much. Yeah. Cool. Just to clarify, there's there's two things that we support as far as backup goes. One is, you know, using VDP. The other is anything that's using the vSphere APIs for data protection or whatever we've renamed it to. VADP, right? It, it's yeah. historically been VADP. Now it's like <laughs> VMware APIs. Hyphen. Yeah. Yeah. Protection. Yeah. Whatever. You guys know what I'm talking about. Full yeah. Um, so if you have a product that's using the APIs, like your Veeams, uh, like your net backups, like your Avamars, like, you know, the major players, right? Those are doing image-based backups using the API. Uh, you don't need to do things like backup the database by itself. Uh, PostgreSQL supports hot backups. We don't have to quiesce the file system when we're doing backups. You just take an image level backup, uh, and if you need to do restore, you just restore the entire appliance. Simple as that. And then as was mentioned, we're also working on a file-based solution uh, for the future. Uh, the, the one thing I want to make sure that people don't get into is that that's the supported path. Snapshots are not supported. Yeah. Uh, do not use snapshots, snapshots to back up not backups. your VC. You'll run into issues. Yeah. It uses the snapshot mechanism to actually quiesce the file system to be able to back it up. But snapshots and backups aren't, yeah, it's not really, it's not the same thing. Yeah. Um, we currently use 5.5 uh, five five with an Oracle SSO and a virtual center SSO on the same Windows platform. And where we want to be is we want to be with a separate uh, PSC and a uh, separate VMware appliance in 6.0. What is my best migration path forward so that that way I can separate what currently runs on one box into two? Hmm. So you have kind of two paths, right? If you're on 5.5, you can do it today. You just deploy a new SSO VM and repoint the VC services, your inventory service, your web service to that SSO externally. Or you can upgrade to 6.0, deploy a new PSC, and then do a repoint reconfigure. So it will go, you'll repoint to that external PSC, and then it will automatically do a reconfigure, removing that embedded PSC and turning it just to a vCenter. Just to be clear, that repointing capability is in 6.0 U1 and later. That's a great blog article on that. I wonder who wrote it. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, but that would actually allow you to actually go, well, as you were saying, I want to go to the appliance. But yeah, you can use the VCSA there. You would just deploy an external PSC using the appliance package, the appliance OVF, and then you could actually use the reconfigure at that point. So that would actually give you, as you were saying, the PSC as an, an appliance. I mean, uh, since you're on Windows right now and you're looking to go, you, you, it's still everything still applies. You won't be on the appliance. You'll just go to the... You'll, you'll upgrade the windows and then do the repoint, or do the repoint and do the upgrade, and you'll be fine. Yeah, just one point on the on, on the repoint. Um, Blair, keep me honest here. If you have 5.5, you bring up a new external SSO on 5.5, and you do the repoint, you shut down the services on your on your vCenter where you had previously had SSO. Yes. If definitely validate that everything is working and you can still authenticate. Once you've validated that, make sure you uninstall SSO from the vCenter because if you do an in-place upgrade, it's going to see the, bit, the, the bits and say, oh, there's SSO, and it's going to make it an, an, uh, an embedded deployment. So you have to make sure you validate and then uninstall the bits from the vCenter server. That's a very critical piece. Yes. Yeah, the, there's a KB out there explaining all the steps. He probably wrote it. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah. what's, if what's you leave your email address <laughs> up, up at the stage, he can send you the KB <laughs> Wow. I think I just got voluntold. <laughs> All right. All right, sir. Okay, um, I want to uh, comment something on the VCSA. Okay, uh, I've been using VCSA since five one. Okay. Okay, so appliance five one five five even six and six u two right now, and uh, my job I have to create a vCenter appliance template, and I find it's such a pain for when it's moved to B Center 6. Yes. Okay? So the make it biggest problem is when we're running on 5155, there's a separate port, 9443 and 5480, the appliance itself. 
So when I create a template, our user has to uh, power on, get DHCP for the name and IP address, but uh, for old one, you can still regenerate the SSO single sign-on certificate. But moving to six, it's impossible. That's a really good question. I, if you guys want, I can take it. No, all you? <laughs> all you? <laughs> Um, so so I've been waiting since 6 now update 2 already. <laughs> you should join our, uh, my talk at 4 o'clock on Wednesday, but still, it'll, it'll show some more. But um, 6 we went through a mechanism of doing uh, a single, uh, basically, step upgrade uh, or upgrade or install, right? We, yep. we, just, we just blew through it. Uh, either using the UI or the CLI. Yep. Right? The GUI um, looks very nice now. Yeah, yeah. But it's very pain to me. Yeah, yeah. No, I understand. <laughs> I understand the pain. Uh, we, you're not the first. Yeah. So, um, yeah. so uh, the 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 way we did that and the, the w is a little bit more complex, but um, it it sort of took away the tools that some. Um, of our customers know and love around OVF tool and, and such to be able to do the deployment. Um, what we're working on is bringing back a two-step deployment. So if you choose to, you can do a one-step, hey, deploy, and you're good to go, or you can do a two-step deployment. The luxury of the two-step deployment that we're working on is after the first step of deploying the VCSA, you can take the make a template out of that and then you can use it everywhere. And that it, 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 all you have to do following that is to get it onto the, the virtual appliance management UI and then do the, the configuration. The nicest way is just bring back the 5480 port. That's what that's, yeah. that's the, what we're talking about, yeah. That's the nice way. So yeah. in, in 6.0, the 5480 ma virtual appliance management UI exists. Yeah, um, but it relies on a single sign-on to work. <laughs> Yeah, and so that's what I'm saying. If you do it, what we're working on in terms of the two-step, after the first step, um, you'll be able to go to 5480, the ma virtual appliance management UI, and be able to configure your appliance without the the SSO. So it's in the pipeline, right? Yeah. Uh, it, we're <laughs> working on it. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I've, I've been beaten up before coming here, believe yeah. me. Okay, so there's another thing uh, probably you guys also can still consider to improve is the, uh, when I troubleshooting uh, NSX with vCenter 6 problem, and I find that EAM logs is not available for the support uh, logs. So every time you have to log into the appliance itself to get it. Uh, I personally filed the bug on that, and then we're working on getting, collecting those and doing a little bit better. I, yeah, I, I'm pretty heavily involved in the NSX and vCenter interoperability stuff with some of our different the different BUs, his BU and a different BU that do okay. that work on that. But, so I, I already but, experienced you guys' pain. Eh? Yeah, yeah, I, yeah, we're working on it. <laughs> and for this release, actually, so yeah, it's 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 not a that's not really a pipeline item. It's it's in the it's in the workings, and we're trying to get it in as quickly as possible because that's a okay. yeah, it's important. Okay. Yeah. Okay, I'm good. <laughs> cool. Thank you. Thank you. I'm sorry, I'm back to backup. So you said it is fully supported, and as soon as I sat down, you said snapshots are not supported. Well, Avamar uses snapshots to capture the image backup, so yes. I'm a little bit confused. That was, said, what should I write down? My it, was, it was a little tongue-in-cheek. So people take snapshots, and then they run on snapshots indefinitely, and the snapshots grow on it, uh, like just... Uh, yeah, very much so, that. so yeah, so but what what the vSphere what the old and name VAD, the VADP stuff does or vSphere Advanced Data Protection uh, for vCenter Server, um, what it's doing is it takes a snapshot, everything will be running there, and then we actually quiesce the underlying disk, and then we pull it out and we collapse it back down. So it's the mechanism by which we actually take the snapshot uh, by taking the backup. It's snapshot based, but it's not actually a snapshot. Like yeah. it's not. It's not like your storage snapshot yeah, or actually. using VMware based snapshots. Yeah. Yeah. So if you're using an array based snapshot, you're you not supported. Yeah. So the VADP um, based snapshot is, I mean, the, they use the snapshot mechanism, but what VC uh, specifically needs is there's a hook in the VADP backup and restore, specifically in the restore, where we have to do a few things and clean up a few things. If we don't clean up a few things, you end up with a problem. Yeah. And it's a fairly serious problem. 
That's why I called it out. So the ADP based backup solutions, good to go. Just pure snapshot, not. Yeah. Don't do that. Okay. Sir? Yeah. If um, if you were dealing with a greenfield environment, would you recommend um, a uh, appliance, an external or a combined uh, appliance model moving forward? For you know HA that's coming in the future and other things, is it simpler just to keep it together um, on one appliance? And if so, is there a size where you generally say, okay, if you're dealing with X hundreds of hosts, split them out, or is it a sizing thing, or, or why would you it split has, them versus not? It has nothing to do with performance or scale. Both are, are cover the same performance. The, the, the key thing is that there's a capability that the external PSE gets you today, and that's linked mode. If you don't care about linked mode, stay embedded. It's the simplest way to manage your infrastructure. Um, if, you know, if you care about OpEx, embedded is solving that OpEx problem. The external PSC is only if you care about those added capabilities that the external PSC is giving you. One is the PSC high availability, if you're really serious about that. And the second is um, the, uh, uh, the link mode capability. And licensing. Extrapolating and licensing as far as share license, share and license. share license, yeah, share license, share, share, tags. Permission. share tags, yeah. shared permissions and um, roles. Okay, so I mean, if high availability is something that you're interested in today, um, it, at some point in the future, there's going to be a model of high availability for the VC appliance and therefore the PSA that would be built in. So that will come at some point. We don't know when, but that'll come. Will linked mode ever come or will you always? So like if you know you want to do linked mode, but you don't, let's say, even need it for a couple years, are you doing, like, is there any world where linked mode will work or is that just fundamentally a design decision that's never going to happen? Uh, it's not fundamental. Uh, it's not something that will never happen. Okay. All right. Thanks. Um, so I got about 120 hosts and seven clusters, and I have a need to move the management IP of all of the vSphere hosts mm -hmm. to a different VLAN. And I'm wondering if there's a, a good recommendation for how to do that without downtime. Like, should I be adding a separate uh, management NIC on each, or not NIC, but uh, I guess a VM kernel port? VM yeah, kernel VM kernel port. port on each vSphere host. You could potentially do that. You could set up a secondary uh, VM kernel interface on the device. You could set up a VLAN for that, obviously, that where you're moving it to. Um, and then at which point then you could set up additional cluster, and then at which point you could disconnect all the hosts as you're moving them over to that new cluster and then re-add them back in. Well, the problem that will happen there is that when you add them back in, the actual identifier that the vCenter uses for those hosts will have changed because they're going to be there. While you see them as brand new hosts, the vCenter server will identify the new VM kernel interface and identify the host as being brand new. So if you have any performance information for those hosts, that will be lost. But that's the but the means of actually getting those hosts to move over to a new to a new VLAN without any type of interruption to uh, the interaction with vCenter. That's potentially you could essentially be like dual homing, and then you drop this NIC once it's all done, once you've moved it over to, an, to the same cluster. On okay. the v, on the vCenter side, if you're moving to another VLAN, um, this is 6.0, I assume. Well, I'm also doing a transition from 5.5 on Windows to the vCenter appliance on 6. Okay. The the only thing I would say, as long as you're using a FQDN, um, you can change your IP address um, and you'll be fine in vCenter. Um, if anybody's using IP addresses directly for their PNID, um, it, you, you should not do that. It's it, You will end up in problems. Yeah, so what Dilpreet is mentioned, talking about the PNID or primary network identifier of vCenter. When you deploy your vCenter, uh, you're, you have to either uh, put in a name, like an FQDN, or an IP address. If you put in the IP address, you're locked into that IP address. You can't ever change it. If you put in the FQDN, you can change the IP address later. By the way, for migrations, if you're using DHCP, we won't support the IP. You actually have to reserve a name uh, for us to be able to migrate. Okay. So if I'm going um, to, would I just put a host in maintenance mode and change the, the IP address on the regular management 
uh, IP address, I guess, and then do a DNS update, and it would stay. It would just rec pick it up once it uh, DNS flushed. Do you do you connect your host using the name? Yes. Then you should be perfectly fine. Yeah. yeah that's so in that case, would I not add a second uh, management view report? Yeah. That would be too. That would be too many steps. Too many steps. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. I've got another upgrade related question. I've got an environment with five uh, virtual centers, a mix of windows and appliances all on 5.5. And I need to not just get them all up to 6.0, I also need to consolidate them down into one environment. Mm. I know there's some challenges if we get to 6.0 before we do some of that consolidation. I'm not sure of the details, but I'm also tasked with creating a detailed project plan for this. And so I'm looking for some type of resources that might be able to make sure I don't make some big mistakes. I could, we, we could walk you through it. Um, I, don't have, I don't have any of the URLs memorized off the top of my head, but um, basically what you'd wind up wanting to do is, depending on how they're deployed, um, the appliance in 5.5 going into the, the VAM, it actually allows you to toggle through using an embedded, P, embedded SSO services or external SSO services, the, um, which, is a, which is a nice wrapper that basically repoints to an external SSO. And for, for Windows, we all know the, uh, the repoint KB of going through all the individual services and repointing. So ideally what you'd end up doing is you'd go through and you need to get them onto the same SSO domain in order from the upgrade, at which point then you can have your appliances and your Windows VCs all being able to communicate with enhanced link mode. So what you'd end up wanting to do is deploying some external SSO nodes um, that you then have all in the same vSphere domain. You join, once you're joining, you do one node multi-site, at which point then you can take your vCenter server or your vCSA, go into the, the for, for this hand, uh, you could go into the BAMI here, or you use the repoint scripts and point them down to the SSO nodes, at which point then you'd go through and upgrade your, your SSO to PSCs for 6.0, and you'd go through and follow the upgrade, the upgrade workflows for the vCenter server, just run the MSI file on there, the executable, and it'll upgrade this one or on the appliance you'd go through using the, um, the H5 upgrade wizard and it would allow you to upgrade the, BC, the VCSA. You need to be on, was it update two, Ahmad? Where are we? Yeah, update two? you need to be you on do update that, two. And that'll allow you to then upgrade that vCenter server, the VCSA to, uh, with an external PSC. Does that make sense? Kind of. Kind come, of? come see us hard, hard after this yeah, and, and we'll, we'll, we'll send you some, some links. Uh, All right, are you, great. Are you trying to consolidate the hosts and VMs onto a single VC, or are you trying to consolidate onto fewer PSCs? No, we're trying to get rid of um, um, vCenters. Okay, I mean, so you're five trying five to... vCenters to one. Okay. Oh, yeah, come, okay, that, yeah, was, come, come, that was intense yeah. link mode, how to get everybody onto the same domain. Um, that we're trying one... to get, we're consolidating um, virtual centers. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. The, 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 that's an interesting problem. It's becoming more and more sort of being highlighted more and more, especially as we increase performance and scale. Um, we, we, there's a couple of answers. I, I'm, not, I'm not too happy with either, either of those answers. Um, so it's something that we'll have to think about. All right. Thank you. By the way, to, to Blair's point, if you're currently on vSphere 5.5 and you have multiple SSO domains, and you want to consolidate, do it now. you do it now in 5.5 because once you upgrade to 6.0, there's no way to do it, right? And, and really the way to do it at a high level is, as, as Blair explained, you're going to deploy an external SSO, you'll repoint the services, and at that point, you'll, all the VCs repoint to that, and now you're on one SSO domain. For those of us that are already on 6, is there a way, or are you working yes. on a way? Yes. Yeah, we're, in, we're investigating that. Yeah. But as of right now, 5.5 is the only way to do it. Yeah, or prior, yeah. All right, looks like we've got about 10 minutes left, so we'll try to rail through some more questions and um, see if we can get to everybody. Yeah. If you don't get your question answered or you have a question that you don't want to say in public, <laughs> write it down on paper, write your email address, drop it off at that corner, we'll answer every email. You want to mention the stuff? We'll get through a few more questions. Okay. okay. <laughs> Uh, okay. So the rumors of the demise of the C-sharp client have been exaggerated in the past. Um, so oh, boy. Is there a shot that with the HTML5 fling and VOM now being somewhat moved over into the web client, I assume that ESXi will include some sort of web 
client thing and we'll eventually get to that point where we can get rid of the C sharp client. So in yes. Sado update two, we actually, I don't know if you ever played with it, there was a fling called the, uh, the embedded host, ESXi embedded host embedded client. Host client. Um, and we actually productionize that. Um, and so what we've done is we've now, in 6.0 update 2, it now ships with this with this VIB that now f allows for you to connect to the SXI host slash UI. Um, and then once you go there and connect, that's actually, it's the embedded host client. It's It has all the functionality. Um, not all the functionality. It has quite a few of the functional bits of the uh, C-sharp client when you connect to an EXI host as a means of connecting to it without having to use a, a full-blown client on your desktop. Is that something that needs to be enabled or is it already there? It's enabled when you go to YouTube. It's already enabled. Enabled yeah. by default. Yeah. Yeah. So go to the FQ QDN of the host slash UI, and it'll bring up uh, the login page. You can log in with your, your host credentials. Okay, thanks. Um, sure. The question about the demise of C Sharp client, we're working on it. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently, it's hard to kill. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> yep. Yeah, I don't want to beat a dead horse. I just uh, heard you talking about snapshots earlier, and I thought I understood and went back to down, didn't understand, but. We have the Avamar data domain and the backup services, and it does force the clients, you know, it tells Virtual Center to take snapshots of the, of the guests and things like that. Are you saying that should not do that against no, Virtual that's, Center? No, that's the mechanism that's, how it works. Put that's it this okay. way. That's, that's exactly how it works. Yeah. Yeah. Put, yeah. put it this way. Okay, we've been having a lot of problems with it, so I just want to make sure. Yeah. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. <laughs> snapshots are not backups, but we use snapshots in the backup process. That's yeah. the easiest way to put it. Uh, yes, um, I was wondering, um, do we see an increase in scalability in the near future? Um, the reason I ask is because I work for a large retailer, and we now have eight vCenters to contain our retail environment, and it's mostly because of the, the 500 data center limit. By the way, we found out the hard way you're very serious about your limits. <laughs> we had someone deploy a bunch of too many VMs, and then vCenter stopped working. Hmm. Um, but... Do we see that increasing? Are you the on 6.0? Uh, no, we're 5.5 five right now. Okay, go to 6.0, you get 3 to 4x improvement in performance and scale just doing that. Um, it's phenomenally better. So 5.5, five, uh, if you're on 5.5 five in this room, get off of it. 6.0 is, is awesome. Um, well, what was that? I told you to wait. <laughs> <laughs> so just, just curious, but is there anybody in here that's on 5.0 and 5.1? Okay, you know that end of life was, I believe, August 24th. Yeah. So. But, um, but to your point, yes, we are. We're working on... Um, I'm trying not to keep, it's kind of coming like a weird drinking game. But yeah, uh, yes, it is on the roadmap, and we're looking at trying to increase those numbers, and we're trying to do it actually at an increasing rate going forward to just allow for just much so higher the, concentration. Yeah, so the, so the hope is not just to increase the numbers so that you keep on finding some interesting issues as you go through. Um, the, the point is to increase the numbers so that you can actually hit them. And that's what we did with 6.0. And so that's why we paused and didn't increase our, our scale numbers for 6.0. And um, we're working on um, pretty phenomenal things in this performance and scale arena. Well, we, we found the magic number was 5.23. Once it hit 5.23, bam. That's 5.5. Five. Yeah. Um, Go to 6.0. <laughs> and one, and one, other, one other small question. Now that PowerShell is supported for Linux, do you think there might be a PowerShell native capability <laughs> added to the appliance at some point? We've we've seen that announcement. It's it's very interesting. I think somebody else in this stage may be able to answer it a little bit better. Um, Alan's not here. So Alan's yeah. Not. Alan, <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm searching. I'll defer for to the Power CLI guys. Uh, yeah, but uh, Power Ready, Alan Renouf, those guys will be able to point you. Uh, well, I, I just meant as a module in the appliance. Uh, we so you can get native. We understand what you're saying. Yeah, I I, I think. Um, we find it very interesting, and we we're we're thinking about it. Yeah. A uh, little bit of a technical question here. We're running into an issue where we decided to upgrade to six. Really excited about it, and we're using um, custom images through HP for our ESXi. And there happened to be a memory link or a memory leak for our servers, so they decide to purple screen every week or so. Um, we can minimize that by restarting it, but the actual problem that we have is with um, 
HA and specifically our vCenter appliance, where if the vCenter appliance is on a host that purple screens, nothing comes back up. And I'm wondering if maybe it's something we have set up with heart beating or something like that, where we have to manually start our vCenter appliance before our servers will come back up and switch hosts. Is your vCenter appliance self-managing? It's self-managing the heartbeats. I, I, what, what I mean by uh, self-managing is it, is it set to restart self. VMs? Yes. Okay. Um, that seems like a very odd issue. If you don't mind, if you have an SR on that issue, if you could drop it off with your email, I would love to look at it. Okay. Yeah. Thank yeah. you. I think this was basically implied, but uh, when you use the forthcoming 6.0 migration tool to go from Windows to the VCSA, are the mob IDs of the objects in vCenter, those are maintained? Yes, the, okay. we, the entire we identity, everything that is there for the Windows box comes over, so yes. We didn't say forthcoming. <laughs> <laughs> We're working on it. So maybe I misheard this, but you said the uh, the upgrade tool, the migration tool you were working on was five five to six. Are you will it, or do you plan possibly maybe in the future to have it work for six to six? Like if we're on a Windows six uh, vCenter and we want to move to the VCSA for future functionality, do you have a plan to do that? Is it maybe somewhere out there? Plan? Yeah. Oh. Wait for it. Right. Working on something. Okay, go. Are you Barney Stimson? Wait huh? for it. <laughs> Lawyers, what can I say? <laughs> um, you were talking about HA for P the platform services controller and vCenter earlier. Um, you mentioned the load balancing methods, been there tried and true, but there's now the new capabilities with the VMware authentication framework, Damon. Is that shipping now or is that near future? Or? We're working on it. Notice okay. disclaimer. The, yeah. the way you said it, it made it sound like it was no. here now. No, I. Yeah, no. <laughs> Okay. Something we're working on. Yeah, we're working so, on it. So uh, if you have a load balancer against your um, uh, PSEs today, um, I think you have a reasonable architecture even for the future. Yes. All right. I think we, well, we'll see. We've got a couple minutes. Um, I've got two quick ones. Okay. One, how long did it take internally to not giggle at the word PNID? Oh, my God. Oh, so. <laughs> At least a month. Never weeks. thought of it. Yeah. Never, a yeah. yeah, a while. Yeah. Uh, also, I before yeah, I'm a big Linux guy. Was, so was that the first now question? I can't that was the first one. <laughs> the second one's really easy too. It's the best one. Um, I'm a big Linux guy, so a lot of my stuff that I did against my ESX hosts were exactly that against my ESX hosts, not necessarily vCenter. Sure. Um, I've since delved into the wonder that is PowerCLI, but also the disgustingness of it because I'm I'm a bash person. Uh, I'm not I'm not too familiar with it. With the appliance, is is there going to be that sort of functionality that may be more Linux based coming in the future, or so? Uh, if you say you're working on it, I'm gonna. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I figure you, I, I'll get beat up as I walk out. Um, no, uh, for for six zero, we already have a uh, a shell that has uh, a, a special appliance shell that has uh, capability built into it to do to manage the appliance. That I can hit, like using SSH and stuff like that. I can just yes. Yeah. Um, yes, you can enable SSH, um, uh, and you you can hit it using SSH. Um, uh, but the appliance shell is made, meant to be a little restrictive, so you don't get a bash shell. Okay, you get yeah. the appliance shell. You can turn on the bash shell if you want. It's the default shell. The first when you turn on SSH and connect to the, mm -hmm. the VCSA, yeah. it's the first shell that you encounter. It's the appliance shell. It has a bunch of like com dot blah 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 okay. that you can actually invoke and do like you know you can request information and you can set information via this. If you cool. go to the uh, tech pubs for 6.0, just type in appliance shell and it'll actually give you our list of full CLIs that you can execute via this shell. Awesome. I'll do that. Thank you. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I think we're out of time, everybody. So, sorry for the people that didn't get your questions answered. But wait, wait, um, wait, wait, wait. Don't, before don't you leave. run out, swag. don't leave. Um, we got we do stuff. have swag, especially for you guys that uh, <laughs> throw it out. Um, got swag. Stay to the end, so we appreciate it. Come up. Uh, and we also have some posters. Uh, if you've been watching the vSphere blog, uh, oops, sorry. Uh, you might have seen uh, this VCSA reference poster, which is pretty cool. Uh, we also have the PSC uh, topology decision tree poster. Come on up. Thank our uh, thanks to the panelists, Blair, Jilpreet, uh, Ryan, and Ahmad. And thank all of you. Have a great week, everybody.